Well, I'm Chris, and this is my installing a wall oven combo or something similar to that video. So that's just over 10 years old, Kenmore electric oven microwave combo, and one of the best I've ever seen in my life. Now, these are in really good condition. They're just dirty from the remodel, so please excuse that. So I have been procrastinating getting this thing in there because it is a hard job to do. This thing is super heavy. I cannot pick it up by myself. And they combine that with super duper sharp edges right here that will just slice you open. They don't discriminate. This thing also is not balanced. It'll tip forward. And also has a tempered front glass that if we land on them corners could just bust that. Then we have to throw this in the trash. So I mentioned it was a Kenmore because it has those two tracks at the bottom with holes in them. They're only about an inch and a half wide. The whole unit sits on two tracks. That's it. There's nothing in the middle. So you may have to tip your unit to see exactly where it rides, but you can also have a completely flat floor as well. So all we're doing in this video is getting an idea how to do the initial set in of the machine. The rest of it is just working around and is not hard. So first of all, if you have cabinets in your kitchen, they have to be in there. You can't just blindly put this anywhere. It has to match the flow of the kitchen so it doesn't look out of place. You really, almost have to have the cabinet that sits next to it installed. So when you build your base, you don't go past the toe board, don't go past the face of the cabinet. So these are your base cabinets and you also want your wall cabinet height marked just so you know. So now you have to decide where you want this. In my old kitchen, I actually had the microwave sitting above the wall cabinets. So the oven part down here, microwave up here, but I actually did that wrong. This time around, I'm moving it down it is not going to exceed the wall cabinet height so that way i can run a wall cabinet on top of it and i'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be designed because when you think about it the real oven back there is low anyway right so if we want it under our wall cabinets there's our line then we get a measurement of the exact height of the unit which is 42 inches 42 inches down mark it and there it is and what's so weird about it is that's almost exactly one foot. So what we need to do is build a base not that high, just shy of that, maybe 10 inches, 11 inches. And this needs to be heavy duty to support that heavy weight. So we're gonna use two by sixes and four by fours. And I'm gonna try to build a nice little platform for it right here. Let me go get the materials. So this is what I came up with. Now, if you have any type of opinion about this, you're missing the point of the video. It's irrelevant how that looks. And this may actually get changed a little bit. Okay, so that's 54 inches. And you can see we are exactly at 12 inches. We got 42, the exact height of this right there. So the other important thing to note is that we got seven and three quarter inches right here. And this is about seven and a half. So at the bottom, we're gonna be able to put a drawer, or in my case, I have a video doing this Revis shelf tray holder, which it came with two extra brackets and we could put a little shelf in there for whatever. I might put my 1911 in there, secret storage for the kitchen. But the point is, planning this out, we actually have enough room in there where we could put a drawer at the bottom. In that case, we would have to change that up a little bit. But for right now, we're just trying to mock it in place, get this thing out of the middle of the freaking floor so that we can plan our cabinets. Nothing is permanent yet in this video. I'm just showing this because you need a super strong base for this unit right here. I've seen people put it on just cabinets that are made out of particle board. I would not do that. So if you're gonna build some setup like that, you have to screw that together because the weight of it, when you're trying to put it on there, will collapse it all. I gotta charge some batteries up. I got three inch construction screws. So I'm gonna screw that thing together and we are gonna get this on there. I'm gonna do it by myself, but I'm not gonna show it because it's not gonna be easy, so let's just... Okay, now would you check this thing out? Now let's look at that base a little closer. So notice I took the glass off the front, it was seven screws. You can see I dropped everything right there, but it was not that hard to get off, and it makes it a ton easier. It took me about five minutes to get it on there by myself, just rocking it slowly. I didn't wanna film it, because I didn't wanna jinx myself. So I did have to do a little tapping left and right to line these up, and a little tapping like that to get these two pulled out so we want them pulled out so they match the face of our cabinets so then you have this area at the bottom 
and spacing it correctly it gave us enough room for a drawer so let's go ahead and get the piece on there and check that out so any standard drawer size we can see it's about seven and a half inches so i went ahead and cut this piece about seven and five eighths this is going to be the face of our drawer but for right now while we put this together we're just going to put this down here to cover it up So whenever you're doing all your cabinets, you can fit that piece in there and just paint it to match the rest of the cabinets. But since we have enough room right there for a drawer, we can actually cut and make our own little pieces just like a real cabinet. I actually learned how to do that. I may make a video on doing the little cabinet and drawer down there if this video gets views. This is my new channel and it's not really catching on. I did give it a quick clean. It needs another one, but it is looking a lot better now okay so first of all let's check for level i leveled this house about a year ago there are no shims on this cabinet so that looks good so we used a bunch of different boards on the base to get that height just right and with our wall cabinets at 54 inches let's check out what happens now so wall cabinets at 54 everything is level and check that out we got about an eighth inch 3 16 gap right there for our wall cabinets. Everything turned out perfect. And this is the wall cabinet that's actually going over it. I was able to save this from my last kitchen. You can see the dimensions. So I probably will do the part two when we build that little drawer at the bottom because I'm also gonna have to show you guys if you're wondering how you come in here and cover this area up because the base cabinet is gonna be sticking out further and how to transition this little area that sticks out to the normal depth. So it's sitting where it's gonna stay. When you're fitting something like that, you have to put everything back in there. That's why that thing's in there right now. Everything passes the test, I really like it. The only thing I don't like is how those two black appliances next to each other. I'm gonna have to put a little white line in there to break that up, but eh, we'll see. Everything seems to pass the test. I'm so happy now that that's out of the way. It was sitting right there for almost a year. Well, that's it for the video. Everything is looking pretty good from here. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.